Cleveland Cavaliers, it has been a brilliant performance for the Celtics. No answers. And the Cavaliers make it 2-0 in this Eastern Conference Final Series. And they're cheering the Celtics for the most part for the season that they had. What's up, YouTube? It's the one and only legend of winning, a.k.a. Low, and I am back with another video. Perfect. Now, I'm pretty sure we all saw last night's game and how embarrassing the Boston Celtics were. Completely outmatched, and quite honestly, it seems as if they are miles away from being title contenders. However, that's not what I want to talk about in this video. What I want to talk about in this video is potentially what the Boston Celtics will do moving forward. Because quite honestly, from what I consistently see from Boston Celtics fans and a lot of other skeptics, is Boston potentially could do a lot of things, but I don't see the realism in what potentially could lie in their future. Some people are being extremely optimistic and making arguments that they could keep Isaiah Thomas along with Markel Fultz and still be able to sign players such as Gordon Hayward and potentially even trade for Rudy Gobert or Hassan Whiteside. Realistically speaking, that's just so outrageous that financially it just wouldn't work anyway. Also, I think what a lot of people don't recognize is on the financial end, how much money is really being pushed out to a lot of these players. And that's including Isaiah Thomas, which is what really is bringing me to my point of this organization. Realistically speaking, if the Boston Celtics want to move forward, the piece that they're going to have to move, quite honestly, might have to be Isaiah Thomas. Now I understand Isaiah Thomas is a great player and he's playing at an elite level even though he's not supposed to. However, being realistic, looking at where the Boston Celtics are at financially, the Celtics are able to keep Isaiah Thomas and potentially sign other players to the team because Isaiah Thomas is on a very, very low contract. Isaiah Thomas is making less than $10 million a year. Actually, Isaiah Thomas is making roughly around the same amount of money that Jalen Brown is, and Jalen Brown is on the first year of his rookie contract. So realistically speaking, the only reason why they have these options isn't necessarily because of the assets that they have at their disposal, but more so because of the contracts that they have on the team. Avery Bradley, Jay Crowder also fit that narrative as well, where they're receiving extremely low amount of money when you look at their contract, especially compared to their peers talent-wise. So then when you take into account what potentially could be moving forward, you start to realize once these players' contracts are up and you have to re-sign some of these players, especially Isaiah Thomas, you have to stop and ask yourself, is it really worth it? So if you fast forward to 2018, when Isaiah Thomas is a free agent, let's look at what exactly people are referring to and what the Boston Celtics should do so I can show you financially how impossible that really is. So in 2018, the cap is projected to be around $103 million. And the luxury tax threshold is projected to be around $125 million. Now in the 2018-2019 season, Al Horford is going to be making $28.9 million. To get a better understanding of how much money that is, that is roughly around 30% of the cap just taken up by Al Horford, which is pretty ridiculous. Then add on to the fact that this offseason, potentially Gordon Hayward would sign the max contract with the team which is roughly around $32.5 million per year for four years, which means that Gordon Hayward and Al Horford would make roughly around $61 million. And again, the cap in 2018 is roughly going to be around $103 million. So roughly 60% of the cap will already be spent on two players that quite honestly, I don't even think is really worth it. But then you add on to the fact that you're going to have to sign Isaiah Thomas as well. So let's just say hypothetically speaking, if we're going to be optimistic, Isaiah Thomas decides to take a pay cut. And instead of making max money, let's just say he signs a contract that's roughly around four years, $80 million a year. And let's just keep the numbers even so it's easy to calculate and he's making $20 million each year. So in the 2018-2019 season, after you've already spent $61 million on both Al Horford and Gordon Hayward, add another $20 million on top of that for Isaiah Thomas. So we're talking about a team that roughly is going to spend around $80 million on Isaiah Thomas, Gordon Hayward, and Al Horford. Now, I want people to just be honest, and I'm not trying to be funny here, but if you're spending $81 million when the cap is going to be roughly around 
103 million. If you're spending that type of money on players such as Gordon Hayward, Isaiah Thomas, Al Horford, is it really worth it? I mean, honestly, we, we have to really be honest with ourselves. Is it worth it going down this rabbit hole? Because we're at a point where, quite frankly, even if you add Gordon Hayward or a Paul George, I don't really think Isaiah Thomas and Al Horford are great enough players to really elevate the entire organization so far to where it makes some type of justification to sign these players to this amount of money, especially when you haven't even filled out the rest of the roster. Again, the Boston Celtics have massive problems outside of just trying to get another star because outside of these three players, you still have to re-sign a player like Avery Bradley if you decide to keep him back. Mark is smart. Then you got to fill out the rest of the bench. Again, it's a lot of moves that has to be made with the Boston Celtics. And when certain fans simplify what the Boston Celtics could potentially do, I think they don't understand the financial end because it realistically speaking just doesn't make any sense. Now, there are certain ways that you can get around the cap, especially with bird rights that probably will be given to Isaiah Thomas, but those privileges will only affect Isaiah Thomas at that point. Gordon Hayward, Al Horford, Rudy Gobert, whoever else you're trying to bring to the organization, those players will not have bird rights because obviously they will be brought to the organization. They will not have spent around three to four years with the team. So you can't expect them to have certain privileges, no mid-level exceptions and so on and so forth. So again, financially speaking, it's borderline impossible to do what people are referring to, which is why I'm saying the only way you could realistically build anything of value with the Boston Celtics is if you start trading pieces away. And quite honestly, I think Isaiah Thomas is the perfect trade piece, especially if you pair him up with a piece such as a 2018 Brooklyn Nets pick. Now. This goes back to what I initially said in my original video. If you're the Boston Celtics, you more likely want to look for pieces such as a Jimmy Butler or Anthony Davis. The reason for this is because their contract was signed before the TV deal money started to kick in. So they're making significantly less amount of money compared to their counterparts. Just to explain to you how much money the TV deal brought in. Before the TV deal, the cap was roughly around $70 million. After the TV deal kicked in, this year, the cap went up from 70 million to 94 million. The amount of money that people have been signed to overcompensate for the amount of money that's been given to each team because of the TV deal is ridiculous. Again, another example, Anthony Davis, like I said, he signed a contract before the TV deal kicked in. He's getting paid roughly around $22.1 million. Now, after the TV deal kicked in, you have players such as Chandler Parsons and Harrison Barnes who are getting paid $22.1 million. Paul George, pre-TV deal contract, $18.3 million. Ryan Anderson, post-TV deal contract, $18.7 million. And then you have Jimmy Butler, who's only making $16.4 million because again, he signed his contract before the TV deal. Then you have post-TV deal contracts such as Evan Fournier, who's making $17 million. And then Evan Turner, who's coming off the bench for the Portland Trailblazers, who was making $16.3 million. So if you're a Boston Celtics fan, financially speaking, it would not make any sense at all to spend that much amount of money on Isaiah Thomas, Gordon Hayward, and Al Horford. But that's just my thought on it. Please let me know what you think about the whole scenario in the uh, comment section below. And I think Isaiah Thomas will be a great trade piece because I think you will be able to upgrade Isaiah Thomas. And if we're being optimistic and believing that Markel Fultz will come in and immediately leave an impact on the team on an elite level within his first two to three years, then yeah, move away from Isaiah Thomas. It just doesn't make any sense at that point. Because even if you keep Isaiah Thomas and Markel Fultz in a backcourt with one another, Again, offensively that may work, but on a defensive end, come on, we just have to be realistic now. But again, let me know what you think about the whole Boston Celtics thing. I'll leave a comment in the comment section below. Shout out to my man B Souls. I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to get at you B Souls, but some of the stuff that you were saying in the last video, I know you're just trying to be optimistic, but financially speaking, it, it still wouldn't even work out. But I'll make sure I leave a link in the description to his channel, and um, I'll see y'all later. Peace.